My dear sister, I left you suddenly and without warning. For that and so much more to come, I apologize. I didn't board the Helios knowing what would happen, only that pursuing my research could change the world. And we did! Just not in the way I'd imagined. Not yet, anyway. I want to explain everything now, so that you'd see that there is nothing to fear. You've always tried to protect me, my big sister, but this was meant to be. It's now my turn to protect you, if only so that things unfold the way they are meant to. Time and necessity has kept us apart, but that is about to change. We need you here aboard the Helios with me. I've enclosed a receiver, and as the name implies, it can receive signals through which we will communicate. I know little of this will make any sense right now, but I also know that you will keep your promise. I love you. Your sister, Ada. Pretty light on details there, Ada. You leave without warning and now leave me aboard the Helios? What aren't you telling me? What Ada actually had to tell her sister Rose, she left for a good reason. Otherwise, Rose would never have gone to see her. In the horror walking simulator close to the sun, we take on the role of Rose. She is on a small autonomous ship on her way to the somewhat larger Helios. The fact that the ship is traveling autonomously should be emphasized because the game takes place at the end of the 19th century. But at that time everything is fine with the technology and so you can easily get on the great ship of the Helios. Once you arrive, you quickly realize that something is not right here. First of all, the fact that it looks messy and that nobody will receive us. This should cause us concern as the Helios is not just a ship that is a bit too big, but one that is specially designed for research and scientists, but unfortunately extra worrying if something goes wrong. I thought the great Helios would be more... busy? I guess Ada didn't tell anyone I was coming. I don't know if Bioshock was a great role model, but I assume it was. The style could be from Bioshock and the setting is damn similar to it, also the fact of free research. Under these circumstances we set out to find our younger sister, Ada. Getting in contact with her works without any problems, because we got a hearing aid with receiver from her. One could also call it a headset. But with this headset, we not only have contact with our sister, also a guy named Aubrey talks to us from time to time and is a great help in many moments. In general, you have to say that you don't meet many characters, but the ones you are dealing with are very interesting and well written. Our sister is an important physicist on board, also leads a team and is probably highly respected. By the way, Nikola Tesla also plays a very important role because he is the scientific director of Helios. And not only that, there are some well-known names, including Albert Einstein. However, at this point it must be noted that the story and the universe of Close to the Sun has little to do with our reality, because Albert Einstein had little to do with scientific work at that time. So this is just an example. This fact of an alternative story is noticed much earlier with objects that could be added to the genre of steampunk and inventions that we still dream about today. Because of these circumstances, a very interesting, even if not the best or most exciting story is told. At some points the game told me too little, although it would have had so much to say. And that's a real pity with this game and the setting. My first Tesla tower at Warden Cliff was a huge success. I always knew that my dream of free energy transmitted wirelessly across the globe would be a resounding success. What I did not foresee was the hunger of the human race. It's gluttony for more, more and more electricity. Wireless transmission of power, that's the easy part. Finding that power in the first place, now there's the tricky bit. Because what it did much better is the graphics and the design. So the graphics look fantastic in themselves, but the developers have outdone themselves in the creation, design and creation of the ship. The pictures should speak for themselves. But the character design, the optical and animations of the creatures moving in the game fail completely. I could never keep a grin off my face, but that doesn't make the game worse of course. Because what is also very well done is the creation of an atmosphere as it is appropriate for a decent horror game. At least at some places, because sometimes it degenerates into a walking simulator, which I personally don't find bad. But outside of it, really dense atmosphere, just at the beginning it really creeped me out as I walked along the ship. Quiet noises startled me, I looked suspiciously into every corner, every door opening happened with a heartbeat. Ah! 
The horror was far from perfect. This can be seen in two points in particular. The first is the jump scares. One at the beginning caught me really well and I like such jump scares, but the rest, either much too easily predictable or so badly placed that the effect was zero. And the distribution of the jump scares was also rather strange. In the beginning really some and I was afraid it would stay that way, but no, most of the time, or rather almost all of the time, the game gets by without it, which is what I prefer then. The second point are the passages where you have to run away. Even though I've been meaning to research what makes good horror, what film and game makers have to pay attention to, I haven't been able to do it until today. Why am I telling you this? Well, I have never seen such bad runaway passages until today. And I want to know what the developers have screwed up in these places. Normally everything contracts inside me when an opponent is behind me, close on his heels only just away, when you can hear him breathing, but on close to the sun? Absolutely none of it. I can't even look at this point negatively on the game, because it's very few and short moments where the rest outweighs so much to nothing, but I'd be interested to know why that is. So in summary for the game we can say, great designed game world, very interesting setting, great story with weaknesses, very interesting characters and very often a great atmosphere. If you are willing to compromise, you will have a few good hours of playtime and fun with Close to the Sun. And besides? The dubbing actors in English are so well done. <laughs> yeah, this is Ada's room, alright. Never did learn to clean her room properly. 